Hi, I'm Allison, and I'm here as one of the many friends in Daisy's Garden. Oh, okay. Um, I do some of the writing here, and most of all, we get to hang out and come up with um, ideas that we want to pursue. Oh, you do. <laughs> so this painting is actually by you, right? It is. Was that a long time ago. Mm hmm. <laughs> it was a self-portrait. Um, it's you. What? Yeah. It's you. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell? Does it look the same? Yeah. Mm. Tell me about story. Yeah. It was a time um, when. You know, I grew up here in Canada yeah. and I created a series about getting ready, so I wanted it to... Thank you! Thank you. Also, I'm uh, because of uh, almond milk, so I didn't steam it really like... Sorry. No, no, no! It's awesome! It's Thank, you. Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Conference, your story. Oh yeah! So it was a time in my life that I wanted to create a series about getting ready, getting ready for life, getting ready for, you know, I think everyone can relate to when we don't really know what is the next step. So it's about the mirror, right? Mm-hmm. The mm -hmm. broken mirror and I can see the door. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? Well, for me, Growing up in Canada, we get exposed to a lot of different ideas and um, I was born in Hong Kong so I still um, speak Cantonese, all the food we cook, but it felt like every morning I was going into maybe a more western lifestyle. There were some parts of me that I felt like maybe really really express my heritage like dim sum school and some that are definitely more in tune to my life um, in Canada. So the mirror is kind of about how we see ourselves, how we get ready, and sometimes that in a place like Canada, we really make our own way, you know? Sometimes our path isn't going to look like my mom's because the country is different, the language is different, and it's not yeah. going to look like somebody that lived in Canada 50 years ago. It's going to be my own way. So that's what this piece is, and I really hope that, you know, the people that can enjoy this piece can feel that way too. So I think it's really bad the about the things you told me, the multicultural thing. Actually I grew up in Taiwan but I can feel difference between myself and others. Get rid of it because you can just don't eat it. Yeah. It's I'll, I'll eat it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, You're welcome. It's, it's just the lifestyle. Should I pan down? Yeah, 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 pan down, please. Oh, I can't. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> so, for the, for the food, yeah. I love the fusion food. Mm -hmm. I, I can really stick on the same food every day. You know, like always Chinese or always Canadian or always French. Mm -hmm. I will like freaking out. Sometimes the Japanese. Sometimes it's becoming like food, like something. So it's my life, it's what I love. So I just feel like so confused about myself. Anyway, so this this stuff is for Daisy Cole mask. This year is a collaborate with the Volkswagen. This time I just talked about this with my friend Allison, and she <laughs> I don't think I told them. <laughs> I, I just say I want to do like the summer edition, a different way to show the identities about the Daisy Code. So Alison just told me she has a friend. Mm -hmm. She can do the soul. You can want to show them. So it's actually from, from <laughs> yeah, me, right? This one's yours. Okay, this one's for me. Uh, what you can see in the soap that Daisy is about to show you, and all of the ingredients are actually sourced right here in Canada. Um, and all hand wrapped locally by me, so yeah. I really hope you'll enjoy it. Um, you can see here, uh, all of it is kind of showing a slightly different watermelon pattern. Yeah. Because another part of my growing up is, um, it'd always be, ooh, thank you so much. Oh, it was so ooh, good. Thank you. You can grab the, the bowl the, to show them. So, so we got some mac and cheese here today for lunch. Yeah, just remember to visit here when you are in Canada. But you have, there is an exfoliant that is based um, with a poppy seed. So that's going to help um, be really gentle on the skin to remove um, dead skin, to revitalize uh, the surface but also being able to be completely organic and go back into the earth. And all of the mica and all the ingredients are ethically sourced here in Canada. 
so you'll see this will open into that and we only made 50 of these so it'll be a limited quantity unfortunately we can't get it to everybody this time but um, for those that will be able to pick it up, we're so glad oh, that you're going to be yeah. able to enjoy it. You can do a, the uh, chicken and waffle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Less soap. Yeah. Chicken yeah. waffle soap. Yeah, Macaroni we, cheese, Canadian food yeah, right. edition. It's just we're talking about like what we're doing about this. Just about like, I just told her like, I'm foodie. I love food a lot. So we're going to do a lot of stuff about the food. Yeah. Right? In the summer, we're thinking about the watermelon and I think uh, watermelon that's something that's definitely in my childhood even in you know Hong Kong or in Canada watermelon is a favorite all around the world so that something's never changed and in this soap um, Iris also used um, some avocado and coconut and olive oil so it's a very soft body soap that's going to be really, really gentle and moisturizing. And something that I guess our friends won't be able to see for sure, it's uh, something because each soap is actually a slightly different size because it's all handcrafted. So then True. when they're all together, then you really get the feeling of picking out your own spurns are going to be a little bit different yes. so i think that's something that's really special <laughs> is um each of the cracks they are highlighted in gloss to give it that three-dimensional feeling and i think that's a nice contrast between when you think about beautiful soft skin oh yeah right 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 i can see that now <laughs> It's very subtle. Nice, you know, sometimes it's, I think, in those self-reflection because I don't think we change in our life because we experience something, but it's because we're able to reflect on it. So I really like the feeling that you're opening up the self-reflection into something that's going to be really fresh, really beautiful, yeah. and the new you. So, is what you gonna get. When? When? I don't in know. In September for Vogue Fashion Night Out. Oh, okay. Thank you. Taiwan. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Just say hi to Allison. Oh, okay. <laughs> to take picture mm -hmm. with the brunch. Okay. <gasps> <laughs> you put it, are you going to put it with your salad? Bon appetit. Bon appetit? Yeah. So what you get, Allison? I got some macaroni and cheese and some salad. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good. And mine is steak and eggs and prawns on the side. It's a lemon fog. It's a lemon fog. I love it. The lemon fog. So what are you eating? <laughs> some steak mm, it's and so potato. Good. You want to try? Mm, no, I don't eat meat. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> 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 Why are you showing them my secrets? <laughs> Different companies have um, like the lightning and the darkening drops. So when <laughs> you change color in the summer and winter, you can put a few drops in the foundation to change the color. Did you ever try that one before? No. Me too. So I always for my own makeup would be like I have the most lazy way to put my makeup on every day. Finish, and it also like keeps so all my prefer, makeup intact. You prefer the matte finish? No, I prefer a dewy finish. But then if I use matte products, then my oily face will make it a dewy finish. You like it? I have to accept it because it's what my body wants to make. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> and I can really admire that, and I really, definitely it shows an amazing level of commitment to his work. But I also find I have a really hard time dealing with, and maybe this is ignorant of me, but I find I have a really hard time dealing when an artist hurts themselves or they hurt their body to express their art. Because like in New York, one of the pieces he did, it was um, part of the story. He had an arrow inside of him in his plane. And when I was at his presentation, I thought, okay, I don't know if the arrow is just maybe a little bit inside of him, or maybe like it's just he's glue it there. And I also I, I understand from his presentation that it's very important to him that the pain is real to really show the real discrimination and the real pain 
and I know that you know that's not my background and I really really want to be respectful in how I interpret it and respect somebody else's right to express their history, their story, it becomes part of the work because then, you know, the work is always about the artists themselves and I think sometimes, even though it can be really hard to understand, like anyone can make art, and but then everyone can come from a very different background. People themselves have pain and sometimes that's part of the reflection, but then I think sometimes, you know, what does that look like when we see, like how can we have more conversation around like, oh, you know, even if it makes like beautiful art. Like I remember in New York, there is this photo of um, a famous heiress, so a rich lady, and she jumped off a building to commit suicide. Um, and they called this the most beautiful suicide because someone took a photo after and she was already passed away. Um, so what do you mean? So before she did this, she asked somebody else I don't. Do I don't think so.